Hey YouTube, what's going on? It's your girl Miss Ree. I'm back again. This is video number I don't even know. But in this video, we're going to talk about um I'm, I'm not sure how to word it, but we're gonna talk about um things that were um uh, I don't know prominent in your marriage when you first got together that are not there now or are lacking now um things like um, um not necessarily um sexual things or not necessarily making love and things like that but um as far as like holding a door open for you you know things like that that they used to do when they were trying to get us um taking each other for granted you know which is a number one number one thing that we really truly do as married people and you know like I said I've been married for 18 years this year was 18 years and we have literally been to hell and back um as far as finances um as far as um marriage infidelity love um, disappointments, cars, you know, just all, all kinds of stuff, you know, because God never said life was going to be smooth. He never said that. He never promised that. Um, so, you know, I've, I've been through some things and it's funny because when we're on a cruise boat and it's just him and I and strangers it's, it's, it's heaven on earth. I tell you no lie. It is heaven on earth because I have his full attention. There's no job pulling on him. He's not tired from working. There's no um, friends over here in his ear and family over here in his ear. There's nobody pulling on him. You know, it's, he's just completely relaxed. And if I could have that every day, life would be beautiful. Beautiful. But let's keep it real. Let's keep reality into check. That it ain't going to happen like that every day. There's going to be challenges in life, period. But um, my charge to you is to try to um, rekindle, you know, date night, things like that. Like me and my husband, um, both of us are off on Saturdays, which he works on Sundays. Both of us are off on Saturday. So Saturday evening, about 5, 5.30, 6 o'clock, he has pooted around in the yard on his cars. You know, that morning we'll get up and we'll go to Walmart, do our groceries, and, you know, we'll come back. He'll, you know, like I said, mess around in the yard with his cars or whatever. And I'll go off and do my little, you know, shopping and whatever I'm going to do. And by 5.30, 6 o'clock that evening, we're both ready to settle down for the evening, you know, cook something or either eat out bring something in you know what i'm saying um and we watch movies he gets the dvds that come out on tuesday because that's what he does he collects dvds and it's a piece of hair right here and it's bothering me and we'll watch basically we'll watch the shows that we've recorded during the week like um 50 nsi all those things that we don't have time to watch like you know during the regular week day we'll watch those then we'll watch DVDs. We'll start watching DVDs and TV shows at like 6. And by the time we finish, it's like 12 midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning. You know, just we it's just a time for us where just the two of us sit down and we just watch show after show together. You know, we laugh together. We talk about the different shows. We fuss at the people on the TV. You know, things like that. It's just a, a good time that we have with each other, you know. And... Sometimes we'll do it on Friday evenings. We'll start on Friday evenings and watch a couple of the shows. And then, um, you know, we'll pick it up again on Saturday evening. But I encourage you to find something, some slotted time where it's just the two of y'all. No outsiders, no children. You know, put the kids to bed. You know, send them to aunties, to grandmas, or whatever. Even if you have to go out. You know what I'm saying? But... The DVDs and the TV thing, that's because we don't have a whole lot of money to keep going out. You know, we're not broke or anything like that, but to me, a lot of times that's a waste of money that we could be 
putting on something else or doing something else with. And by us being faithful cruisers, a lot of that little extra money, we put on our cruise. You know, we save that money for our cruise. So, you know, because you're talking like $1,800 to go on that cruise, but it's so worth that $1,800. You just go one time, and I promise you, you'll come back to this video and say, Miss Ree, I love you, and you were correct. It'll, it'll, it will bring you back together. I promise you that. I promise you. After our first cruise, um, which my husband takes two weeks. He'll take the cruise week, and then he'll take the whole week after we come back, which I don't do that. But... It's like, I can't wait to get off work to get home just to be with him because we've been together for a whole week together. Shopping, hanging out, you know, just just doing what you do on a cruise boat, you know, just hanging out. But I encourage you to spend some kind of time together. Restore what was there in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? And I pray and ask God that, you know, he touches me as the wife you know, show me things that my husband needs. And I pray that he touches him and shows him things that I need as his wife. You know, what he needs for me as his wife. You know, and, you know, I ask God to show me how to love him. And, you know, for him to, to learn how to love me and to give me the things that I need. You know, and of course, here comes the devil. Right here, all back up in here, all up in here. You know what I'm saying? All up in this. Telling you different little things. You know, that he's out doing this or doing that and doing this and doing that. You know, rebuke the thoughts and move on. Because he was tearing me up for the last couple of days, you know. You know, telling me all kinds of crazy crap. You know what I'm saying? And then when I got up this morning, God told me just as nice and plain as day. You got to pray about it and give it to me and let it go. And when I heard that, I commanded my joy. I commanded my peace in the name of Jesus. Peace that surpasses all of my human understanding. Joy that this human body can't contain, this mind can't contain. And I went on about my day. I went on about my day. All them crazy thoughts the devil was trying to send me. You know, he had me all tore up yesterday until God said, okay, enough is enough. Leave her alone. Let me speak to her. And that's when he told me what he told me. You know, and I went on from there. So God is awesome, y'all. He is awesome, 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 awesome. And no, I'm not a minister, but I am an intercede, an intercessor. I'll intercede for marriages, children, <clears throat> you know, whatever I can. You know, whatever God lays on my heart. When I start praying, whatever he lays on my heart and whoever he lays on my heart, that's who I begin to pray for. You know, <clears throat> things like that. You know, if there's a prayer request that you need, pray you know things like that shoot me a message and as i pray i will jot it down and you know go to god with it for you on your behalf you know i do believe that's my calling to intercede to be an intercessor you know and i'm pretty much private with mine when it's when it's time for me to pray it's just me and god i don't want nobody else around i don't want nobody else in the room i really don't want nobody else in the house you know, a lot of times I do my prayer on my way to work. You know, when I get up in the morning, you know, I praise God for who he is, you know, and for another day and things like that. You know, this is the day that the Lord has made and I will be glad and rejoice in it. You know, thank you. You know, and you go on with your, you know, acknowledgments and things like that. However, you pray when you get up in the morning. Um, and then, you know, mostly I'm running around trying to get ready for work. And then when I get in the car, it's just me and God. I mean, what else can I do in the car? But. You listen to the radio or pray. So a lot of times I'm praying on my way to work. Um, if my husband doesn't call me or, you know, something like that. But I just, you know, I just really charge you to um, get these books called The Power of a Praying Parent, Power of a Praying Wife, Power of a Praying Husband. And read The Power of a Praying Husband book because there are things that are in there for us as well. And, you know, it's just a powerful book. They're, they're really powerful. It's a whole series. You know, I've talked about these before, too. But anyway, I really charge you ladies. And believe me, I'm praying for marriages all over the world. I'm praying for all of us as wives who walk through, you know, different things with our husbands. But we love them. You know, they take us there. and But we still love them. You know what I'm saying? And 
When I say you ain't the only one out there, you ain't the only one out there. Trust me. I don't care what you've been through, who said what, who did what. You ain't the only one out there. You're not the only one. Everything that you do, everything you've been through, everything you've walked through is a testimony for somebody else. Trust me. I've been through that infidelity and feeling insecure and that you ain't good enough for him and things like that. I've been there. I've done that. I've been there. I know that feeling. I know that feeling. So, and I know that distrust feeling. So, like I said, no matter what you've been through, no matter what you message me, I've been there and done it. Or somebody has been there and done it. I ain't going to say I have. I'm going to take that back. Um, but I love you ladies. Keep your heads up as your as wives, as to help me ask God to show you what you need to do, say, be, and everything else. I praise God for you and God bless you. Bye.